The National Leagues have five borders teams across three divisions and let's start with a look at National 1 and our featured commentary match between Gala and Kelso was down here at Netherdale. Kelso hadn't won at Netherdale for 15 years but they were riding high at the top of the table after two wins in National 1. But it was Gala who got off to the best start with Fergus Johnston collecting Ewan Dodd's pass to go over in the first 10 minutes with Craig Dodds converting. Five minutes before half-time, Stevie Cairns bundled over to double the lead, Dodds again successful with the boot, to give the Maroons a good 14-0 lead at the break. The next score was crucial, and it went Gala's way, the giant Lithuanian Marius Tamositas getting a touchdown to take Gala's lead out to 19 points and leaving Kelso with a formidable task ahead of them. But they gave themselves a lifeline when Ewan Knox found his way over the line here, with Patterson converting, and then things got interesting when Bruce McNeil scored a converted try to take them to within five points. But three yellow cards cost Kelso dearly, with two of them going to Terry Logan, which meant he didn't see out the rest of the game. But Craig Dodds put the nail in Kelso's coffin with a late penalty to make the final score Gala 22, Kelso 14. I think we showed a bit of character on a, a side like that. They're going to come at you with everything. They're physical. They've got some big boys like Manil and stuff like that. And I think we fronted up well. Eh? So the turn leg will be a, a difficult one, but I look forward to it. The pleasing thing is there we went, was it 21-0 down and we came back, we stayed in the fight and we, we a couple of minutes to go, you know, we're still there, which is all we can ask. Listen, Netherdale's a hard place to come. There's no many teams will come here and get the win. And we knew that and we knew we had to be on point. I think the first 25 minutes we weren't quite there. Maybe a wee bit of shell shock because the first couple of games we, we'd controlled it from the first to the last minute. Today we never. Credit to Gala, they came at us and they put us under a lot of pressure, especially... You know, the contact area, the back row was phenomenal and we knew that was going to be the case. Um, but listen, we're on our journey at Kelso and one of the finished article. The main thing is that we learn for that. They're, they're definitely a threat, you can never write them off. Uh, you know, they're that kind of team and they're scrappy and they're physical and they come at you wherever they've got. So we, uh, we totally expected that in the second half to have to front up. And, and yeah, there were points where we had to kind of compose ourselves and, uh, and, and you know, just try and and um, organise it, and I think we did that towards the end. I think we were convincing towards the end. Also National 1, Melrose were putting their unbeaten record on the line at home to Dundee High. We sent Bill Poulsen along to watch this one from the Green Yards. Melrose, playing Southern Knights white jerseys due to a clash with Dundee Rugby's new colours, were two points adrift at half-time despite abundant possession and territory. Home centre Gavin Wood had opened the scoring with an unconverted try after 13 minutes following mall possession and a neat break by standoff Stu and Hutchison. Dundee went ahead and they put the ball through hands to allow Isua Matkaji to run in a try in the right corner. Standoff Fraser Mackay converted from wide out. The second half opened with Mackay and Hutchison exchanging penalties before Gavin Wood's enterprise by going in for a second try when he took a tap penalty to himself. Hutchison kicked the conversion and soon after added a penalty. Immediately after the restart from that kick, James Brown gained possession in his own half and raced away for an unconverted Melrose try close to the left corner. Two more penalties by Mackay kept Dundee in the game, but with no more than a minute of normal time left, a quickly taken line out just outside the Dundee 22 gave Melrose possession from which Hutchison jinked over for the bonus point try. Injury time, Lewis Mallon made an interception at halfway and had a clear run to score a try under the posts, which Hutchison converted. This made the final score at the Green Yards, Melrose 35, Dundee Rugby 16. Also in National 1, Bigger climbed to the top of the table with an impressive 45-6 win at home to Watsonians. Carthur Queen's Park went down to a second home defeat, this time to Borough Muir, while Highland edged out Heriots by a single point. In National 2, it was a second win in a row for Peebles, this time away from home by 12 points to 7 at Preston Lodge. We caught up with Donald Anderson after the game. Yeah, it was a really tough game, but we managed to come away with a win. Yeah, they're always a tough team through there. It was, well, it was pretty stuffy the whole game, really. It was, um, I think it was nil nil stuff, still at half time, and then we scored, and then they scored pretty much straight away, and then we scored, and then they had all the pressure at the end, but we managed to hold out just and take the win. We had a few boys uh, were away this week that played last week, so, uh, but there was a couple of young laddies stepped up and a couple of older boys. 
played the full A in the front row, which they're suffering now. But uh, they were like they had a good tack as well, kind of held us in the scrum and that. But we done pretty well, to be fair. In National 3, Berwick returned to Murrayfield today, but rather than playing inside the stadium, this time they were on the back pitches to face Murrayfield Wanderers. Here's Hugh Brown. Having defeated Greenock Wanderers last week, Berwick were up against the other Wanderers side, Murrayfield, but this time the result went the other way in a bruising but entertaining game with the men from Scremerston losing in the dying seconds. Berwick started well and one of the remaining 2019 Shield winners, Gareth Hill, intercepted the ball and ran more than half the length of the pitch to score the first try. Jack Webster's conversion was wide of the sticks, something which would ultimately prove costly. The home side opened their account with a penalty in 25 minutes from Fian Law Call and he followed that with a second strike just on half time to make it 6-5 at the interval. Murrayfield, whose former players include Roy Williamson of the Corries, were on song early in the second period, with a third penalty from the boot of their number 12, giving them a four-point advantage. But Berwick knew that just one score would put them in front, and that came in 60 minutes from a pushover try by Ali Grieve, but again Webster failed to add another two points. Berwick hung on bravely for the last quarter, but five minutes into injury time, Wanderers were awarded another penalty, and that man Call stroked it between the posts for the victory. Berwick fought bravely, but the battle was lost thanks to a few basic errors and an on-form penalty kicker. Final score at Roseburn Park, Murrayfield Wanderers 12, Berwick 10. Jack, that must be tough both physically and mentally. It was, yeah, definitely more mentally. Um, we feel like we've maybe beaten ourselves today. Um, hats off to Murrayfield, they played very well. Frustrated us in attack, they defended very well. Don't feel we really got going today though. Two tries though, can you take something out of that? We can. That's the, the tries came from when we started to play some rugby, um, when we put a few phases together and we, we started to look dangerous, um, and that's when we felt we we grew into the game. But uh, we just we didn't do that for long enough period to the game. You're a very different side from the one that won the shield two years ago. Is it taking time for the boys to gel as a team? I think it's it's probably more the COVID break. I think you know we were we were flying high the season after Murrayfield. You know we were we were doing doing well in this you know this league. Um, but this league's totally changed since then. Um, you know, a year and a half off, a lot of sides are looking very different. So you can't look anything into the league table um, beforehand. You know, we were, you know, we were sitting top of that league when it when it came off. I think ones were maybe sort of fifth or sixth. I don't want to do them disservice if they were if they were higher than that. But um, today we didn't look like a team that were up there, um, and it's it's about trying to get back up to those levels. I think. How do you do that? Just hard work. We've got to get down Tuesday and Thursday. We we tried to. Just, Go back to a bit more basics today. Um, you know, before COVID again, it's frustrating to still speak about it. But before then, we were flying high. Everything we were trying was coming off. And after such a long break, you just can't go straight back into that. You know, you've got to build from the ground again. And we're maybe just trying to to go straight back into those those extra skills, those extra offloads that were that were sticking uh, 18 months ago. They're not quite there now. So we've really got to just go back and strip it back to basics because. Uh, we are a good side when we can get going, as we showed for, for patches in that game, but, but definitely not 80 minutes.